Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, and welcome to online worship with Orange Beach Presbyterian Church. My name is Kim, I'm the pastor here, and what a joy it is that we are gathered together for worship today. Just a couple of quick announcements before we begin worship. Uh, the first announcement is that we have a second worship service today. It will be this evening at 5, and that is our traditional candlelight communion Christmas Eve service. So if you are an online worshiper, um, come on back at 5 o'clock. We will have our Christmas Eve service uploaded uh, to the YouTube channel, and I hope that you will join us. If you are an in-person worshiper, uh, come on in. It starts at 5 o'clock, and uh, we hope to see you here. This is a great time to uh, invite a friend to come worship, too. A lot of people like to go to church on Christmas Eve, so if there's somebody you haven't invited yet, pick up your phone when you're done worshiping this morning, uh, shoot them a text, give them a call, and invite them to come worship with us tonight. Uh, a week from today is New Year's Eve, and we are going to have our brunch and worship lessons and carols service. Um, it's going to be in our fellowship hall. It's a potluck brunch. We already have a lot of people signed up for stuff, um, but you'll just come in. Brunch will be served at 9.30, and um, we'll be eating in the fellowship hall. And then at 10 o'clock, we will begin worship. We're just going to stay in the fellowship hall. We'll stay at our tables, we'll drink our coffee, and we'll have our annual lessons and carols service. So it's going to be a little bit more laid back, just definitely a different uh, setting for worship. But it's going to be one that is um, joyful and meaningful, and I hope that you will join us. Another good time to invite a friend. Um, you know, sometimes if people haven't been to church for a while or they're not sure what to expect, um, a little, a different service might be a good time to invite them to come. Just, you know, hey, come have some brunch, eat with us, sing with us, and worship with us. So please invite friends and neighbors. Um, and of course, we'll have our online worship service uploaded for the lessons and carols as well. You just won't be able to have brunch with us. So I hope that you will join us for that. Uh, next announcement is our food pantry will be closed two Mondays in a row. So for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, the pantry is closed. Our usual Tuesday and Thursday hours are the same. Tuesday, 10 to 12. Thursday, 10 to 3. <clears throat> Um, and the recovery meeting schedule does not change. So if you go to an AA or an Al-Anon meeting on um, Mondays, that schedule will not change. Those meetings will take place as always. Those are our announcements. Now we're ready to quiet our hearts and prepare for worship. We'll begin, of course, with our call to worship. And all of the words that you're going to need today will appear on your screen as you need them so that you can participate fully. We come to glorify God, to rejoice in the one who saves us. Our hearts leap for joy, for God is coming to us in a child. God comes for those who hunger for hope, for those who thirst for grace. God comes to walk with those who follow in faith, to bring peace to a shattered world. Light for candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He is coming. Tell the glad tidings. Let your lights be shining. Good 
On the first Sunday of the month, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. We light it again to show that our hope continues. The following week, we lit another candle, the candle of peace. We light it again to show that our work for peace is never done. One more Sunday and another candle was lit, the candle of joy. We light it again because joy is all around us. Today we are hours away from Christmas and we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. Scripture tells us that God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in them. As the flame burns, let love shine out and into our hearts. Let it burn so brightly that it lights a flame within each of us that shines out into the world, spreading the love of God far and wide. Let us pray. God of love, you love us so much that you sent your only son. Let us reflect that love in all that we do, not just today, but every day as we follow in his footsteps. Amen. Let's now go into a time of confession. First, we'll pray silently, and then we'll pray together in the prayer found on your screen. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Lord, we are so excited. Christmas Day is almost here. We want to jump ahead to the exciting and wondrous celebration. We are impatient to hear the whole story. Slow us down again, Lord. Help us to remember that God continually calls us to be those who will bear the good news to those in need. Forgive us when we forget to do that. Heal our wounds and bind up our spirits. Enable us to go into your world offering our lives, our gifts, our talents for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The ancient promises of God are fulfilled. God does not forget us. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
before we hear God's written word. Let's turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, how thankful we are to be gathered here together this morning, not in the same room, but gathered together as one family of faith, not physically present together, but spiritually present as we worship together, as we sing songs that praise you, as we pray to you, as we hear your written word, we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our eyes, Lord, our minds, our hearts, so that we'll hear your written word as it is read out loud, and we'll recognize your voice in those words. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 57 through 66. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak, praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, the final Sunday of Advent. It is Christmas Eve. Tonight we will have our Christmas Eve service, and then tomorrow is Christmas Day. 
But we still have one more Sunday of Advent to talk about the Sunday of love. So today we're going to talk about the birth of a child, the birth of a different child, the birth of John the Baptist. Uh, John's parents were Elizabeth and Zechariah. Remember, Elizabeth is a cousin to Mary. Uh, Some of you may remember the story. Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, having been told that she was also pregnant. Uh, Elizabeth further along than Mary. When Mary speaks, John the Baptist leaps in the womb. And both of these women know that they are carrying not just exceptional children, but children who are a gift from God, miracle children. So who are Zechariah and Elizabeth? They are good and righteous people. They are Jewish. Uh, They are older. How old is Elizabeth? Uh, We don't really know. The short answer is we don't know. Uh, The longer answer is many scholars have looked at this and have made some really good educated guesses as to just how old Zechariah and Elizabeth are, um, were. I've heard everything from 50 to 80 um, would be good educated guesses. The truth is we don't know, but we do know that she was past the regular childbearing years. Um, They were childless. They had not been able to conceive until then. Uh, Earlier in the first chapter of Luke is when Zechariah is told that his wife will give birth. Um, Of course, an angel appears to Zechariah and tells him, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to name him John. Uh, And he asks the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man. My wife is well along in her years. Uh, Zechariah knows the realities of life. If they are childless, you can be certain that they have prayed for children, wanted children. Um, In this day and age, people needed children to care for them in their older age. This is long before the time when we had uh, assisted living facilities available to us, definitely long before uh, Medicare came along. You needed to have children to look after you, and you wanted children that was considered you know a normal family a husband a wife and children so you know that he has been praying that his wife would have a child and here his prayer is answered and he can't believe it because they're old i mean she shouldn't be able to have children at this age um not to mention the fact that it was it, and is, it, it still is the, today, it's not exactly safe for an older woman to have a child. Um, so, of course, he is questioning what the angel is telling him. He is not like Mary, who heard the words of the angels and he said, yeah, sure, God, here I am. I'm your servant. So this angel answers Zechariah, I am in the presence of God. I am an angel of the Lord. I was come to tell you this. So now you're going to be silent. You won't be able to speak until the day that your child is born because you didn't believe my words. So now you can't say anything. So poor Zechariah has to spend, you know, you think nine months is a long time to be pregnant. Imagine nine months being a long time when your wife is pregnant unexpectedly and miraculously um, and you can't speak. You can communicate, but not using words of your mouth. So that's who Zechariah is. That's who Elizabeth is. Uh, Elizabeth knows this is a child of God. So when it's time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gives birth to a son. And scripture tells us that her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy. And they shared her joy. The birth of a baby is always reason to celebrate. There's just something joyful about a baby. You look at the tiny little face and you count the tiny fingers and tiny toes and everybody takes turn, turns holding the baby. And Elizabeth would have been no different, but different in that they never expected that this would happen. As always, I'm always thinking about the back part of this story. 
the things that we're not told. As Elizabeth is walking about town and her belly is growing and growing and she is clearly pregnant, what were her friends and neighbors thinking? Were they praying that she would be able to carry this baby to term? She has not been able to have children thus far. Were they uh, incredulous? Were they speculating how this could happen? Were they wondering what, how this birth would come about, if she would be okay, if she would even live through it? So, of course, they know that the Lord has shown her great mercy. She's not supposed to be able to have children, and here she is. She gave birth to a son. So after the baby is born, on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. Uh, again, they were Jewish, um, and Jewish babies on the eighth day would uh, take part in a religious ceremony of circumcision, and they are no different. And this is when they would announce the name. And of course, traditionally, you would name your child after a relative. That continues some to this day. Both of my children have uh, names that are family names. But she says something very odd. They were going to name him after, they assumed, the people assumed that they would name him after his father, Zechariah. But Elizabeth spoke up and she said, no, he is to be called John. That's what the angel said. That's what God said for them to do. And she is being faithful. And they said, but there's no one among your relatives who have that name. So they're, now they're trying to ask Zechariah, who has not said a word, has not been able to speak since the angel visited him. So they're signing to him, like, what do you want to name the child? And he asks for a writing tablet, and he writes, his name is John. He and Elizabeth are in agreement here. The angel said, you know, God said name him John. We are righteous. We are going to listen to God. His name is John. Doesn't matter if it's a family name or not. We're going with God on this one. So when he writes that, his mouth was open and his tongue was loosed and he began to speak. And what words did he speak? He praised God. Because, of course, he praised God. Why would you not when this child that you have prayed for and prayed for and prayed for is now here? You are at the circumcision. You are at the point where you announce his name. Everything has come true just like the angel said, and now you have the joy of being obedient to the path that God has laid out for you. So the neighbors are filled with awe, and everybody's talking about this. Of course, the gossip, the retelling of the story. The have, did you hear what happened with Elizabeth and Zechariah? Elizabeth had a baby. What? No way. She's way too old to have a baby. It's true. I saw it with my own eyes. As it trickled out, the story kept spreading. It's true. My sister's neighbor told her that he saw the baby. They're naming him John. What? That's not a family name. I'm serious. My friend's cousin's sister lives in the next town over, and she held the baby and knows his name is John, right? The, the word is spreading. Everybody's talking about it because it's astounding. It's a miracle. They're too old to have a baby, but here he is. Zechariah couldn't even speak. He was mute, and now suddenly he is speaking. They're naming this child John. They're saying they're being obedient to God. It's not even a family name. And when he named him, then Zechariah could speak, and he praised God. Everybody's sharing this news. Let's take a look at this last verse. Everyone who heard this, heard the story, knew what was going on, everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? They knew that God's hand was on this child, on this pregnancy, on this birth. They knew that God's hand was on Zechariah and Elizabeth. So they're asking, what is this child going to be? These are great questions to ask when you see a baby, when you hold a baby, when you have a baby. You look at this child and you think, 
he's going to grow up to be this. You hold the baby for the first time and you think, oh, she's going to be, you have all of these hopes and dreams. You wonder what the path is going to be for them, but you have great expectations. And yes, some of our expectations are on the parents of the child. If the parents are struggling, you think, oh, this child is going to have a rough time of things. If the parents are both doctors, you think this child is going to grow up to be a doctor. If the parents are both you know, brilliant, you think this child has this whole life ahead of him, that this child is going to be brilliant too. So these people know that Zechariah and Elizabeth are good, righteous, godly people. They have heard a word from God. They have surpassed all expectations that the neighbors had for them and they have had this child and so now what is in store for this child there's something special about it because god has his hand on him and indeed he grows up to announce the coming of the lord he says i'm not the light but i've come to announce the light God's expectations for John the Baptist were that he would prepare the way for God's own son, that he would prepare the people to receive God's own son. And if that sort of puts you in awe of who John was, I've got something to tell you. God has great expectations for you, too. God has great expectations for all of us. God knows who we are. God knows who our parents are. God knows where we've been, the mistakes that we've made. And God has great expectations for us. What then is this child going to be? I mean, you could say that every single morning. You could get up and look in the mirror and say to the mirror, what then am I going to be? Wonder what your day has in store for you. We are not all going to have these angel experiences. We are not all going to hear directly from God about how our life is carved out and special and important and a miracle. But know this, our lives are miraculous, special, carved out. We are on a path that God has carved out. Now, God has also given us free will, so sometimes we wander off the path. We don't always make the best decisions. Sometimes we get you know, lost in the woods. <clears throat> We're not even sure where the path went. But God is always pulling us, encouraging us to get back on that path. And our path, just like John's, should be pointing to the light. We're we're not Jesus, but we can point people to it, to him, to Jesus, to God. We are the ones who are the hands and feet. We are uh, the body left on earth. 2,000 years later, to continue to prepare the way for Jesus to return, to continue to point toward God in all that we say and in all that we do. We are the ones that God loves so much that God whispers into our hearts, I have a job for you. I have a task for you. I have a calling for you. Here's what I want from you. We just have to listen, don't we? Imagine the love that Elizabeth and Zechariah had for this child, this child from God, this child that they never thought would happen. Think of the years that they spent wondering why she didn't have a child, wishing that they did have a baby, wishing that there were children running around their house looking at their neighbor's kids and thinking, why don't I have that? And now suddenly they do. The amount of love involved and knowing that this child was chosen by God, that God loves your child that much. 
that God is somehow at work, not only in Elizabeth, but in Mary. And here we have these two tiny little babies. I mean, it's 30 years before Jesus begins his ministry. It's, you know, a good number of years before John begins pointing the way to Jesus. So as these babies are becoming toddlers and little boys and young men, their parents are watching, saying, God has plans for my child. God has big plans for this boy. God has such plans for this man who is my son. They knew who their sons were. Remember, Mary is the one who told Jesus to turn water into wine. She knew what he could do. Elizabeth and Zechariah knew that this was a child from God because Zechariah said, his name is John. Elizabeth said, his name is John. This is the name that was given to them by God. What then is this child going to be? Oh, you just wait and see. And that is what we can say every day. What is my day going to be? Just wait and see what God will do. What is this year ahead of us going to bring? What will 2024 bring us? You just wait to see what God will bring. It will not all be happiness and joy. It will not all be an easy road. But we are on the road with God and with one another. We are part of the family of Christ. We are children of God, co-heirs with Christ, because God loves us so much, that much, that God gives us God's son and God carves out a path for us too. So ask yourself, think of that excitement that all the neighbors were running around and talking about it and asking, what is this child going to be? Ask yourself, what am I going to be? God's hand is upon me. I am here for a reason. I was born for a reason. What does God want from me? What then am I going to be? And then live into that calling each and every day because God loves you that much. Amen. Let's now pray for and with one another. Gracious God, we are thankful for the paths that we are on. We are thankful for all of the people who are in our lives, people that are our siblings in Christ, people that we see every day, friends and loved ones and neighbors. We're thankful for the relationships that we have, especially when you are in the middle of those relationships. We thank you for this opportunity of worshiping and learning about the characters in the Christmas story. We are thankful that Christmas is almost here, a mere hours away. We are thankful for the opportunity to celebrate the birth of your child. But God, even in the midst of all of the joy that comes with Christmas, we still have sorrows. There are broken families and broken relationships. There are paths that seem to have led to nowhere. We're not sure when that's going to turn around. We all know people who are sick in mind and body or in spirit. These are our loved ones, and we cherish them, and we worry about them, and we pray for them. We lift them up to you for your healing And we give you thanks and praise for the people that you call and equip to do that healing. We give you thanks for the doctors and nurses and scientists and caregivers that work so hard to make us whole. And we acknowledge that sometimes the greatest healing of all comes when you call somebody home. And we celebrate their homecoming. We are overjoyed that they are with you. And yet we are heartbroken that they are no longer with us. Stand with us in that strange dynamic of joy and sorrow. Sit with us in our grief and comfort us. Put people into our path who need to hear a word from you and give us the things to say and the things to do that might show them how they are loved, that might point them to you and bring glory to you. 
be with us in the days ahead as we celebrate Christmas, as we march toward a new year. Help us carve out a path in the new year that leads us always to you. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This concludes our worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week for our lessons and carols. I hope that you will join us. But for now, it's time to turn off our devices, turn off your phones or your computers, however you're watching worship. It's time to turn it off and go out to doing worship, turning the church inside out. Just for a little bit, though, because we'll be back for our Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m., and I hope that you will join us then as well. But for now... Let's go out and get ready for Christmas. Be excited as we do this, for we part ways with God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Children of the Lord said, Amen. Amen.